Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those within the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome to Insights, I'm Sherry Stewart. Well, if you're like most everyone that we've talked to over the last several months, you're hoping that this year will be a better one. For some of you, that means switching careers or getting a better job or perhaps re-entering the workforce. Well, in 2021, how do you do that? What are the top jobs in Northeast Michigan and how do you make those important connections during the age of social distancing? If you're a military vet, how do you go about highlighting those top nine transferable skills. We're talking about all that and more on today's episode. Joining me to kick off today's conversation is Shelly Blankenship. She is a familiar face around Alpena and Alcona County. She is a uh, business solutions professional at Michigan Works Northeast Consortium. Thank you for spending time with us today, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, in this age of uh, social distancing and uh, still trying to move forward in careers, what are you seeing in terms of the hot job markets in our region? So we're hearing that it's uh, obviously healthcare, transportation, logistics, but is that true for this region or are there certain pockets of uh, the state that those opportunities are more, more prevalent? Most definitely. So there are um, really a ton of of opportunities available um, throughout the state and most um, definitely in our area as well. Um, I did a quick search this morning um, on our website, the Pure Michigan Talent Connect. Um, I did a quick search just um, alone, just on our zip code, uh, five mile radius. Um, I did not do any key search, uh, word searches or job titles. And I got 70 jobs just alone in our five mile radius. Um, and they were in healthcare, um, manufacturing, retail, um, just in those alone, I can give you just a quick update. Um, Alpena, Alcona Credit Union has several openings, Gordon Foods, Domino's, Dollar General, McDonald's, Home Depot has several jobs posted. Um, so there's just a wide variety um, of positions available um, in all, all variety of sectors. So it's um, just a gamut of opportunities out there and part-time and full-time. And that's certainly good news given the year that we've just come through. So I know many people are certainly hoping for a much brighter future in 2021. And obviously employment is definitely a part of that. So um, in your expertise, Shelly, I know that uh, your office has held a lot of the uh, virtual uh, job fairs. How do people prepare for a virtual job fair? What do you recommend? Well, the virtual job fairs are really quite difficult to uh, put on. It's um, difficult um, in our area. It's There's a lot of factors play into that, um, you know, with technology as we just kind of went through. Um, but really um, the, the thing that job seekers really have to prepare for is um, the interview process. So inter the interview process, what that's gonna look like probably in our uh, future coming up is um, it's going to be held virtually. It's going to be in a virtual platform like we're doing right now through Zoom or another platform. So you have to be prepared for that. Um, dress professionally, have stuff ready, have a quiet setting, um, that sort of thing. I don't think Michigan Works right now is really planning on any virtual um, job fairs in the near future. We really want to get and have face-to-face um, -face job fairs. Um, what that's going to look like probably will be outdoors. Um, we did have one of those um, this fall. Um, it was small just because of COVID. We couldn't have a lot of attendees. Um, so we're hoping in May that we're going to have, um, hopefully the numbers can increase and we can have a much larger scale um, job fair like we normally have. Um, 
Usually we have it in March. Um, so in May, we're hoping to have a much larger job fair outdoors. And as you yeah. said, can you talk a little a bit more about uh, many people are working uh, virtually, so they are doing the, the, uh, the online interview, the virtual interview. So talk about the importance of preparing for that just as you would the traditional, which most of us are, are used to, that going into the office, um, wearing that uh, conservative suit. So how do you prepare for a virtual interview to make your best impression? So you, you would still prepare just like you would for any other job fair uh, or interview. You still prepare the same way. You still have your resume ready. Um, you still have your questions prepared. You still investigate the company that you're interviewing with. Um, but you just want to make sure your surroundings are quiet because um, you're going to be doing this virtually. Um, you want to have a quiet setting prepared. Um, look around you. Um, you're going to be on a webcam. So what's behind you? Yeah. Is it professional looking? What's behind you? Don't want to have loud stuff. You don't want to have dogs barking in the background. Although that's kind of hard right. today, you know, um, you know, you want to have your phone silenced. Um, but that would be just like in any other, you know, if you were going in person. So um, pen and paper you want to have available, um, stuff like that. So um, you just want to make yourself pre presentable, you know, um, just use common sense and, um, you know, have, have those things available, have your resume ready, um, send, it to, send it to that interviewer. Um, and have it in front of you as well so you can answer those questions. That's so important. And, and, and this is uh, a topic, it's almost the elephant in the room many times, but when it comes to salary, uh, what are your recommendations in terms of A, uh, finding out uh, what you should really be uh, requesting or expecting as a salary? How do you even approach that topic? Well, generally you don't wanna bring that up uh, right during your interview process. Um, that's something you don't wanna ask right away. Um, definitely, that is the elephant in the room, <laughs> per se. Uh, but um, yeah, do your research. Um, find out, uh, you know, what people are making in the area. Um, and it's always negotiable. Um, but yeah, you don't want to ask that right up front. Um, that is a deterrent, of course. But yeah, it is important. Wage is important. So yeah, you want to, you, you, you can negotiate that. Mm -hmm. um, most places are negotiable with that. What are some of the uh, great resources or where do you recommend people go online to, to get connected if they're uh, wanting to start out the new year, say uh, switching careers or trying to upgrade in their career? So where can they uh, find uh, Michigan Works Northeast Consortium and how do they get connected with you? Sure, so Michigan Works first is a great resource. So you can um, call our office uh, to get uh, set up an appointment. Um, we're all working remotely still. Okay. But um, you can call our office for appointments. Um, our frontline staff, our career navigators, are great help with uh, resume building, mock interviewing. Um, our website, the mitalent.org, is a great resource for uploading resumes. Um, um, LinkedIn is a great resource. Um, that's a great way to network, um, uh, of course. Um, we also use partners um, in our community like ESI and Star Staffing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also a great uh, tool to use. Um, also, um, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, network with other businesses in the community too. So absolutely, um, reach out to those as well. But um, yeah, you know, you can call our office anytime. Um, one thing I do want to point out real quick is that um, a lot of people have a misconception about Michigan Works that we're unemployment. Um, we are not, unfortunately. You know, we can answer some minute questions about unemployment, but um, a lot of people have that conception that we are. Mm -hmm. So um, they just get the two mis, you know, misconstrued there. But yeah, we are available to help with any employment um, needs that can be helped with for sure. Absolutely. Well, Shelly, we thank you so much for uh, kicking off the conversation with us today. We've got a lot more to share, uh, but yeah. we, we're, we're grateful to kick it off with a familiar face today. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so glad you, you called and I'm so glad I could help you out. Insights will return after these messages. Well, joining me now is Vicki Salemi. She is a career expert with Monster, and it's an online career search portal. Thank you for joining us today. 
having me. Well, Vicki, I know people, what folks really want to know are, what are the hot job markets right now in 2021? What are you seeing? At Monster, we are seeing a demand for logistics, warehousing, and healthcare. In addition, we're also seeing a boom for tech. So according to Monster data, 49% of tech recruiters said they're planning to hire new jobs this year. Okay, so with tech, is that meaning that there's an opportunity to work remotely because we've seen just an exponential boom in those opportunities. So would that fall in line with that? Yes, and just going back to the job interview, I think overall, as the pandemic continues, we are going to continue to see video job interviews here to stay. And with that, going to your question with tech jobs as well, we're seeing it really across the board with so many sectors right now. And I know um, you, you're very um, you know, keen on highlighting those transferable skills. How do you recommend folks best do that? Yeah, such a great question, Sherry, because in our Future of Work Global Report, which will be released later this month by Monster, 70% of recruiters said they need candidates to better articulate their transferable skills. So that could be a couple of things. Number one, phone interview, or video interview, most definitely, as well as your resume. And that could mean including an executive summary at the top of your resume, pointing out specifically your skill set, not so much the industry, but the skill set. So here's an example. So if you previously worked in hospitality and your customer skill set was strong and you're pursuing a position, let's say, in healthcare, where the customer skill sets are also very strongly um, required, highlight that skill set to show recruiters that you have the right fit that they're looking for. Now, what do you recommend in terms of resume length? I mean, for years I've heard have a one page resume. Then there are other times where I've heard that a two page resume. So what is your recommendation here? I would not exceed two pages, but if you have a resume that's longer than one page, it's not a deal breaker. I'm a former corporate recruiter, and I always looked for the strongest skills and experiences that were the right fit for the job. So if it's two pages, even recruiters are looking online right now on their applicant tracking system, so they don't even really have a hard copy. I would not exceed two pages, but if it's less, if it's more than one, don't sweat it. Absolutely. Well, we thank you so much, Vicki. We are out of time. We just don't have a lot of time. As you say, we only have a, a couple minutes, only a couple minutes with this interview, but we thank you for, uh, for uh, sharing these nuggets with us today. Thank you so much. Well, joining me now is Professor Paul Dillon. He is a former Army officer and Vietnam veteran who was awarded two Bronze Star Medals. And he teaches a graduate course on veterans issues at Duke University's Sanford School of Public Policy. That's a mouthful, Professor Dillon. <laughs> it, it is. And thank you so much for having me, Sherry. I greatly appreciate it. Well, absolutely. That's just shown us that uh, you certainly know uh, what you're talking about and you can definitely tell uh, our military population, how they can use those top-notch uh, military uh, skills to uh, go into some other fields. So how would you recommend they go about doing that? Uh, first of all, many um, people transitioning out of the military have difficult, have a good difficult time translating their military skills into civilian life. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of translators online that will help you translate what your military specialty is into uh, a civilian occupation. Um, Google has one. Um, uh, you know, careeronestop.org has one. Uh, many companies have them. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, FedEx, AT&T, all have these online translators that help you to translate your military skills into what might be a civilian occupation. That being said, there are some universal traits that uh, the military teaches uh, their people in any branch of the service that uh, veterans who are seeking a job in the civilian world need to emphasize. The military is extremely mission focused. So yes, you know, you learn the vision how to form a vision, mm -hmm. the vision thing, right. but you also learn how to execute it. And uh, that's a, a skill that uh, military teaches veterans that is very, very uh, important and critical in the civilian world. Mm -hmm. um, nobody who is 
served in the military doesn't understand in any of the branches of the service that it's a commitment to hard work. You know, the Army used to have a slogan, we do more by 5 a.m. or 9 a.m. than most people do all day. I've heard that. <laughs> but let me tell you, that is absolutely true. And even for those of us who are officers. So uh, there's a commitment to hard work and you won't survive in the military unless you um, uh, work very hard. Uh, so that's a benefit to any employer. Mm -hmm. um, a person in the military learns how to function as a member of the team. Mm -hmm. And teamwork uh, is critical. Teamwork is critical mm -hmm. because the whole of the armed forces are built on the buddy system. Right. You know, you take care of your of your uh, of your uh, fellow soldiers, sailors, airmen, or marines. So um, you're 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 very used to working as a team, but even more important, Sherry, for those people who have had some leadership experience, you learn how to lead a team. So uh, you learn how to forge all those people into a into a unit uh, that will accomplish the mission. Well, that and that's a very critical skill. Well, a that absolutely is, uh, Professor Dillon, and we want to thank you for uh, spending time with us today to talk about how our military vets can uh, take those uh, top-notch skills and use those and uh, transfer them into civilian life. So again, thank you for, for spending time with us today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Insights will return after these messages. Well, welcome back to Insights. Joining us for this segment is Michelle Lanza. She is the founder of Work Wider. It's a free membership um, online career and recruitment ecosystem. So welcome today, Michelle. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you too. You have a, a lot of uh, great nuggets to share with us. Um, let's just jump right in. We know that a lot of work is going on remotely. People are working remotely that never envisioned um, themselves having that opportunity in spite of this pandemic. So what are some of the, the barriers or some of the changes that you're seeing um, as folks uh, try to maneuver remotely? Some people want to work, work remotely. How can they find those jobs or what should they do? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, one of the upsides of 2020 is like the realization for companies that actually working virtually works. I think it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for people um, in different geographies. I think the notion of having to move to a specific city for a specific job has changed radically. And I think that that's really exciting for people. I also think one of the, the silver linings is the fact that for people with disabilities, I think that this is gonna open up a tremendous amount of opportunity too, because again, this whole barrier of having to go into the office for some people will be removed for many jobs in many organizations. Yeah, and that's very important that you talk about um, our populations that do have disabilities. So how do you highlight that on your resume? Is there a certain way that you should say certain things that you're willing to, uh, to, to work remotely? How do you uh, best suggest that people secure those types of opportunities? Right. So I think that, the, that, you know, the traditional resume used to have your address on it. And I think that that's a little bit of a thing of the past. I think actually, so taking that off your resume, I think helps. Um, and, I, and I think applying for jobs in any geography and getting that first interview and then talking to a company about it, I think actually candidates should do research too to see what companies are talking about that they're, that they're going to a virtual workforce. You're seeing in many countries, I mean, excuse me, in many cities, companies are actually saying they're closing down their offices because they're moving all to remote work. So I think that there are organizations out there that are really committed to this new way of working. Mm, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Work Wider um, as you're the founder of that. And uh, it's a free membership. And so um, you help people um, looking for careers and uh, recruitment opportunities. So how actually does your, your platform work? 
Yeah, so WorkWider is a platform designed to let candidates show up as their full selves. There's many platforms out there that allow people to show up as one thing. Uh, you know, you as um, there's many platforms that focus on people of color or BIPOC community or different organizations. What WorkWider does is for the first time, it allows people to show up as their full transparent self. So I can be a woman over 50 with a neuro difference. Somebody else can be, you know, a, a black person who has a disability. So it allows people to show up as their full transparent self and allows companies to identify top candidates based on underrepresented groups. Because as we know, another silver lining in 2020 is the realization on many companies parts that actually diversity, equity, and inclusion is not just a nice to have, but a true business imperative. So what WorkWider enables companies to do is find top talent in all groups. And what WorkWider does is we provide resume support for people that need it. We have career curated content daily to make you smarter about your career, more educated about your community. The company, we have companies that post jobs on WorkWider and those companies are committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion and creating cultures of belonging. Mm -hmm. Very in important, uh, certainly as we ma maneuver into uh, 2021. In some of our earlier interviews, we have been told about some of the emerging uh, job markets um, out there. Um, in your expertise, Michelle, what are some of those important skills that people need to have, certainly if they're looking to do remote work? You know, I think showing that you can work independently is key. I think showing that you are somebody that is committed to actually technology is really important. And I think just showing um, natural curiosity is a skill that most companies are looking for and somebody that is going to constantly be willing to evolve who they are and what their skills are. So like a growth oriented mindset, I think is another key skill that people should display in their resume. And, and when uh, clients come to you and those that are using the platform, what are they most concerned about or what are you finding that they need help with the most in their job search? Um, I think that it's just this fear of how to do interviewing in this new world. Because for many people, right, they're taking jobs at a company they've never been on site, they've never met people in person, and that's different for people. So I think a lot of people are just adjusting to what this means to interview virtually what this means to actually explore and understand and investigate a company that you might be joining in a virtual way, never, never stepping on site. So I think that what I, the advice that I'm giving candidates is do your homework, actually dig in and understand what that company is all about. Find out, use your network. Is there somebody that you know that works there? Do an informational interview with them. Ask them what it's like to work there. So I think actually just shifting how we explore companies is going to be different as we move forward. And, and, and before we go, and you may have answered some of this, but how do you recommend people make those important connections? Because this is the age of social distancing. And as you said, technology is so important. So how do we actually make those important career connections? What do you suggest? You know, I definitely think tapping into your network. I think joining Work Wider will help you grow your network. So I encourage you to do that. Um, but I think, you know, what, one point I've been making is that there's always been this notion that you should network with the person that's more senior than you. And I actually think that one really important thing is when people are networking, they should actually look at people that they worked with at all levels. Because somebody that you worked with that was junior before may have risen within their company. So I think actually making sure that your network is, uh, is multi-generational is another key component as we think about expanding who we know and who we network with. Absolutely. Well, that's just excellent information today, Michelle. And we are unfortunately out of time, but we do thank you for uh, spending time with us and uh, sharing these nuggets uh, to help people uh, maneuver the uh, job market in 2021. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Well, that does it for this week's episode. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at news at WBKB11.com. I'm Sherry Stewart. Thank you for watching and have a great week. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News.
This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.